What's going on everybody? My name is Trinkill and welcome back to Know Your Enemy. In case you haven't seen this series before, in each episode we talk about a specific god. We talk about that god's abilities and tips on how to play against that god should you find that god on the enemy team. So buckle up because in this episode we're going to be talking about Anubis. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at Anubis' graph and two things should stand out. One, this dude's damage is off the chart. Two, he really has no ability anywhere else. He's pretty decent in healing because he's got some pretty decent lifesteal features in his kit, and he's also pretty decent in control for the same reason. Now looking at this graph, it should illustrate easily that Anubis is a glass cannon. He's got no defense, he's got no mobility, and he is straight up damage. If you get to him, odds are you're probably going to kill him. But getting to him through his barrage of damage and lifesteal can be quite a hassle. So let's go ahead and jump into his abilities and see what he's got. First off, his passive Sorrow, this is one of the more powerful passives in the game. This grants Anubis a ton of things, essentially it stacks three times, and for each stack, you steal seven physical and magical protection. You also gain 33% additional magical lifesteal per stack. And in addition to that, he also gains a 30% reduction to all crowd control. And that sounds like a lot, but given the fact that Anubis has next to no survivability outside of his passive and one of his abilities, this makes this passive absolutely necessary to give him at least some semblance of an ability to stay alive. His first ability does a ton of damage in a cone shape in front of him, a pretty large cone shape as a matter of fact, and makes him immune to knockback. However, two things about this ability. One, it is a channeled ability, meaning that you can't cast this and continue running, you have to stop and channel this ability, and two, this holds you in place. So if you channel this for the full three seconds, you are still standing still for the full three seconds. Now you at least get a little bit of control, meaning you can spin him while he's standing still and do Plague of Locusts around you, but you are still stationary while you're using Plague of Locusts. His second ability, Mummify, gives him a little bit of survivability and a little bit of control. Essentially, he shoots a straight line projectile that goes a decent distance that wraps the person that it hits. This wrap counts as a stun, and that stun lasts for, at maximum, two seconds. His third ability, Grasping Hands, is a ground-targeted AoE ability that again does a pretty decent amount of damage and slows the targets that are inside that area by 25%. Other than that, not much to really say about this ability. And his fourth ability, his ultimate, Death Gaze, this is one of the highest damaging abilities, if not the highest damaging abilities, in the game. This also holds you in place like Plague of Locusts, also allows you to spin around like Plague of Locusts does, and this is a damage over time ability like Plague of Locusts and Grasping Hands are. However, this damage over time damages every 0.1 seconds. You heard me correctly, 0.1 seconds, meaning that over a three second period, Death Gaze will tick 30 times. That means at max rank, this ability will do 1290 damage plus 450% of your magical power should you land every tick. Now late game, by the time you get to level 20, it's not uncommon for an Anubis to have 6, 7, 800, even 900 magical power. If you have, let's say, 700, just for fun, if you have 700 magical power, that's going to add 3,150 damage to that ability. Add that to 1,290 from his base damage, and you're at almost 4,500 damage. Now again, this is all before protections, this is all assuming you hit every single tick, but we're also assuming you're only at 700 magic power. What if you're at 900, or 1,000, or beyond that? Ignoring the math, just understand that this ability has the power to one-shot pretty much anybody in the game should Anubis get a perfect scenario. So anyway, now that we've seen why Anubis's graph is so one-sided, let's go ahead and jump into the mechanics section where we're going to learn some tips on how to avoid this high amount of damage. Alright, so the first thing you need to know about Anubis is that Anubis is a pub stomp god. What I mean by that is that Anubis is very good at getting into casual games against teams that are disorganized, uncoordinated, and just going ham. 
I'll never forget when I first started playing this game, I played against an obviously smurfing Anubis. For those of you who don't know, a smurf is somebody who is pretty good at the game making a low level account so they can just go in and kill low level players. I played against a smurfing Anubis and I could have sworn this guy was hacking. That's how it feels to get pub stomped by an Anubis. So my god, what can you do to avoid that? Well, let's talk about some general tips. First off, Plague of Locusts. At level 1, it can come very close to clearing an entire wave. Again, against an uncoordinated team, Anubis is going to have you pushed in your tower for at least the first 5 or 6 levels. Now how do you get around that? First off, he can be stunned or silenced or crowd controlled other than knockbacks out of his Plague of Locusts. So if you're, say, playing Isis, you have a stun and a silence at your disposal and you can shut Anubis down quickly. Another thing your team should be doing is having your jungler come and gank an Anubis early. The longer you can delay Anubis getting his ultimate, and the more times you can kill Anubis before he hits level 5, the more separation you're going to have in experience, and the less likely you are to get nuked when he hits level 5 and gets death gaze. Again, remember that Anubis has no mobility and very little control. So early on in level 1, 2, and 3, he's probably not even going to have his mummify yet. If he's overextended, keeping your mid pushed in the tower, your jungler can sweep up behind him and get an almost guaranteed kill. Now while we're talking about mummify, let's go ahead and move on to some tips for mummify. First off, this again is a straight line, fairly quick projectile, so it's not that hard to hit. However, it does take a little bit of getting used to when you're first playing Anubis. Now remember, this is a stun, so if he happens to catch you mid-dash or mid-ability that doesn't give you some sort of stun immunity, it is going to stop you. But again, because it is such a narrow line, it's fairly easy to dodge by sidestepping left or right or moving in a way that's a little more erratic. Now what I mean by moving in a way that's erratic is if you move in a pattern or you move in a straight line, you kind of telegraph where you're going. He can predict which direction you're moving and he can aim his mummify accordingly. If you move forward a little bit and then just stop move backwards for like a quarter second and then move forward again, that's erratic movement and it may be enough to throw him off. If he happens to land his wrap and you don't have any way to get out of that via purification beads or something like that, he's probably going to drop a combo on you. Now Anubis has a ton of different options when it comes to combos. Notably, he's almost always going to drop grasping hands first. That could then be followed by a death gaze, it could be followed by a plague of locusts. He might catch you with grasping hands first to slow you, then mummify you, then plague of locusts or death gaze. He might do a multitude of different combinations of his four abilities, but let me tell you, no matter which combination he uses, they all hurt. So avoiding that wrap, avoiding that mummify is definitely going to allow you to stay alive much longer than you would if you were hit by it. Again, this goes back to my previous video on Poseidon, where if you get caught in that whirlpool, or you have an Amir come in and stun you, or an Ares come in and pull you to him, Poseidon can do a lot of damage, but man, Anubis in that same situation is probably going to do double. So again, I know I said it quickly, and I know I kind of glazed over it, and I know I said a lot about it in Poseidon, but something to do with Purification Beads, or Magi's Blessing, or anything that will cleanse that wrap is very important to avoid being nuked by an Anubis. His third ability, Grasping Hands, this is his safer wave clear ability. He can kind of wait until the minions meet in the middle and drop a Grasping Hands on all six of them. He can throw it out in the lane and allow the minions to walk through it. He can kind of group them up with auto attacks and make it easier for himself. Grasping Hands is his safe way to clear minions. In addition to that, just like Poseidon's Whirlpool, this is a very good zoning tool. You throw this out there in between a lane and the jungle in that little jungle entrance part. And let me tell you, somebody's not going to want to walk through that. Now, it doesn't last all that long, but while it's there, it's safe to say somebody's not going to walk through it. And then we get to Death Gaze. Again, one of the highest, if not the highest damaging ability in the game. How do you avoid this? When you see a laser come out, you can dance like back and forth, do a little, uh, little sidestep in, little movement. He might miss several of the ticks. You can also buy Greater Aegis. That will eat up a lot of the time that it takes him to use that ability, which in essence eats up a lot of the damage as well. If you happen to be a religious person, you can pray to whatever god you pray to, and that still might not help. Remember, a well-placed, well-timed death gaze can be super scary. 
And if you start aegising that every time, what he's gonna do is wrap you and throw down grasping hands, like wait for you to anticipate the death gaze, instead maybe use Plague of Locusts, allow you to get out, then may chase you down with the death gaze. There's a lot of options that he has to kind of trick you into using your Aegis so that you waste it, so that he can then burn you down. If you have mobility, if you have jumps, if you have dashes, those are easy ways to get out of it after you do use your Aegis and he's tricked you, but still, a properly played Anubis can at least get a little bit of the death gaze damage on you. Now that we've talked about all of his abilities, let's talk about some general tips. First off, you're probably going to see an Anubis with Blink or Combat Blink. If he gets ahead, he might choose to go with just straight up Blink. It gives him the option to be a little more aggressive, it gives him a little more mobility when it comes to being aggressive, and between his grasping hands slowing you and wrapping you to get away, he's got enough in his kit to get out of combat for that two seconds and then Blink away. You may also see an Anubis that just will walk into the thick of things and wrap you and throw down Grasping Hands and then Death Gaze and then Plague of Locusts and then right after he's done dropping all that damage, relying on his lifesteal to keep him alive through those damaging abilities, he then turns around and combat blinks away. That can be very frustrating, but also at the same time, that is much more risky because if anybody on your team has any sort of dash or jump, they can catch up to a combat blink. Generally, when you see an Anubis by a combat blink, it's for defensive purposes. And last but not least, because Anubis is so one-sided, he can actually be shut down extremely easily, especially early game if your jungle happens to focus him. And believe me, I would do my best to make sure that an Anubis does not get ahead. If Anubis happens to get ahead, you've got a lot of work to do to catch up. So there you have it. As they say in show business, that's a wrap. I'm upset with myself about that one. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Hopefully you've learned some stuff about Anubis. And hopefully you come check us out next week when we're going to be talking about Thanatos. The Hand of Death.